It's 8 o'clock, and after a nearly year-long investigation, the January 6th committee shares its findings with the American people. There's a lot of questions, who's responsible, who's involved. A lot of Americans are going to be seeing for the first time some of the detail that, uh, that occurred. Previously unseen material in the January 6, 2021 attack released. We're going to lay out uh, all of the evidence we have found. Testimony from two key witnesses and depositions from former senior Trump officials. America has long been expected to be a shining city on the hill. How can we play that role when our house is in such disorder? Tonight, the role lawmakers allege former President Trump played in preventing the transition of power and a conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election. President Donald Trump's intention was to remain president of the United States in violation of his constitutional obligation to relinquish power. Republicans questioning the investigation's legitimacy. It has used congressional subpoenas to attack Republicans, violate due process, and infringe on the political speech private citizens. As the committee lays out just how close they say our democracy was to collapse. I believe that tonight will be sort of an opening of the narration, the narrative of what happened as an assault on our democracy. The world is watching. More than a thousand witnesses interviewed and new evidence from more than a thousand closed door interviews and 100,000 documents culminating to Tonight, tonight, the first January 6th committee hearing was on display for the American public. Good evening. Glad you're with us tonight on Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Shannon Ogden. I'm Danny New. New video and testimony providing a disturbing and unfiltered account of that fateful day at the U.S. Capitol. The first of several hearings on their findings of the January 6th Capitol riot. The January 6th House Select Committee's chairman, Benny Thompson, beginning by saying the duty of the committee was to uphold the Constitution's call for a peaceful transfer of power. In this moment, when the dangers of our Constitution and our democracy loom large, nothing could be more important. Thompson also reminded the world he was not going coming to them as a Democrat, but as an American, seeking to find the truth about what led up to and took place on January 6th. Republican Liz Cheney also speaking to the importance of bipartisanship in this committee and laying out a timeline of the hearings to come, a timeline that she says will prove President Trump's role in the January 6th attack. President Trump engaged in a massive effort to spread false and fraudulent information to convince huge portions of the U.S. population that fraud had stolen the election from him. This was not true. All Americans should keep in fact in mind this fact. On the morning of January 6th, President Donald Trump's intention was to remain president of the United States despite the lawful outcome of the 2020 election and in violation of his constitutional obligation to relinquish power. Cheney went on to say that over multiple months, President Trump coordinated and oversaw a seven-part plan to overturn the presidential election. As I mentioned, she also laid out a timeline for the remainder of the hearings, saying they would all culminate in evidence that Trump and multiple Republican congressmen worked to overturn the election results. Now, tonight's hearing centered on the testimonies from two witnesses, Caroline Edwards, a U.S. Capitol Police officer, and filmmaker Nick Question, who spoke about his experience filming members of the Proud Boys in the week leading up to January 6th. The atmosphere was, it seemed to be much darker. I, I make efforts to create um, a familiarity between myself and my subjects to you know, make them feel comfortable. And um, the, the atmosphere was much darker than, uh, this day than, than had been in these, other, in, these other, in these other days. And there was also a contingent of Proud Boys that I hadn't met before. We were just, as the best we could, we were just, you know, grappling over bike racks and trying to hold them as quick as possible. Um, all of the sudden, I see movement to the left of me and I turned and it was Officer Sicknick with his head in his hands. More than 800 people have been charged in connection to the January 6th riot and that number is still growing. Today FBI agents raided the home of Michigan gubernatorial candidate Ryan Kelly. He was taken into custody on misdemeanor charges and has since been released on bond. 
And here in our state, a dozen Coloradans are also facing charges connected to the Capitol riot. The Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez has a look at where those cases currently stand. The Coloradans who flew to D.C. to participate in the protest and subsequent insurrection came from all over the state. About a dozen were arrested and charged. Most recently, Jennifer Horvath was arrested in May and charged with disorderly conduct, among other things. Her boyfriend, Glenn Wesley Croy, pleaded guilty in August to some charges. Now, Avery Carter McCracken is accused of punching two D.C. police officers at the Capitol. He faces numerous felonies, including assaulting an officer. Thomas Hamner is pleading guilty to charges like resisting arrest and civil disorder and should be sentenced in September. Hunter Palm is also accused of entering, this time Nancy, Spe uh, Nancy Pelosi's office, the Speaker of the House, and then urging others to hack into a laptop. Pictures show him sitting at a conference table with his feet up at the Speaker's office. It was a family member who identified him. Robert Greaswine is also facing charges for intimidating police with a baseball bat and spraying aerosols at them. He's been ordered to remain in jail until his trial. And one of the well-known names in this group is former Olympic swimmer Cleet Kellner. He pleaded guilty back in September to obstruction of Congress and agreed to fully cooperate with the investigation. Now, the FBI has posted photos of 532 people on its website that it believes were involved in that insurrection. Many have been arrested. Many others still have not been identified. The FBI is still asking the public to send them tips if you recognize someone in those photos. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And there are two more hearings next week, Monday and Wednesday, 8 a.m. our time. The January 6th committee has not announced a formal schedule for the rest of the hearings, but there could be as many as eight more through the end of this month. The final hearing will be in September, of course, right before the November midterms. We will have full in-depth coverage of tonight's primetime hearing on Denver 7 News at 10. You can also get the very latest on the DenverChannel.com and on the free Denver 7 Plus streaming app. So now all counties in the Denver Metro are experiencing high rates of COVID-19 cases, according to the CDC. There are 350 cases and 11 hospitalizations per 100,000 people in Denver County. Denver 7's Rob Harris is live with what this could mean as we head into the summer. And of course, a busy travel of everybody coming to Denver for the Stanley Cup Finals, Rob. Yeah, and Shannon, on that note, I actually just heard from officials at Ball Arena. They say that the health and safety of their guests is the top priority. They're going to work with local government and league officials to adhere to safety guidelines and they will also have heightened sanitation protocols in place. But the main question for people is how to make sense of this ebb and flow we're now seeing with cases and if we should be adapting our daily lives in response. There are summer days and concerts and of course the Stanley Cup Finals coming up. So how can we live our lives but also be responsible and safe? We're waiting to see if certain communities or venues are going to reinstate any rules like masks or vaccination requirements. But at the end of the day, Dr. Michelle Barron with UC Health says each person is going to have to make sense of their own risks. The key thing is that you are making sure that you've looked at your own individual risk and that you've done everything you can to protect yourself. So if you are fully vaccinated and boosted, and if you're in the appropriate uh, age group, <laughs> boost it again. I think you can probably live your life fairly safely without worrying that you're going to end up very sick from this. Now, Dr. Barron says the Denver Metro is seeing a slight uptick in hospitalizations along with the overall increase in cases. She recommends masking up if you find yourself in large crowds, particularly indoors. But with all this said, it is very important to keep in mind that even with these higher levels of cases and hospitalizations, we're still nowhere near the record levels we were seeing this winter during the Omicron surge. Live in the newsroom, Rob Harris, Denver 7. Thank you, Rob. And we will have the latest on Denver's COVID-19 rates, plus an integrated map showing transmission on a county by county level. You can just check out this story on the DenverChannel.com. It was hot today. It'll get even hotter through the weekend. It's getting hotter and more Coloradans are enjoying the water, but conditions this year could be more dangerous than usual. It is possible that this year we're going to see a couple peaks in the river as that light snow melt melts off. Rescue teams getting you prepared so you don't have to call them. And water this level, it's pretty quick to start to go hypothermic, and that's not a place you ever want to be. One Av super fan getting an amazing surprise. I'm a newly single mom, and this is just something that I could never give her. Hundreds of donations showing support and giving her a chance to see her heroes at the Stanley Cup Finals. She lights up. She turns into a different kid when she steps into those rings. 